sometimes you need to say things which you know in your heart of heart are right, but which are profoundly unpopular. If a cross-section of the British population, which was representative, was to watch and listen to what I have to say, then a very large majority would disagree with me. But saying the right thing when it's unpopular to do so is exactly the time when you need to say the right thing. Now, we're talking today about Shamima Begum, who's lost her appeal against the stripping of her British citizenship. Let's talk about it. Now, Begum was born in this country in 1999. She is as British as I am. When she was a 15-year-old girl, she was radicalised and groomed and trafficked, left for ISIS-controlled Syria the best part of a decade ago when she was a schoolgirl. Within days of arriving, she married a Dutch-born ISIS fighter who's eight years older than her, we'll talk about that, and gave birth to three children, all of whom died. Now, in 2019, after the so-called Islamic State had essentially collapsed, she was found uh, in a refugee camp in northern Syria. And the next day, the Tory government revoked her British citizenship. Now, the government claims she had dual Bangladeshi citizenship, but Bangladesh denies this, and has also declared that if she entered Bangladesh, she would be executed. Under international law, it is illegal to deprive someone of citizenship, if that leaves them stateless. Also a violation of British law, under the British Nationality Act of 1981. But let's go on the basis that she has dual citizenship, on the, the government's uh, claim, they're very strident about it. What this is saying, what the government is saying, is that for millions of dual nationality Britons, and there are many millions of dual nationality Britons, your citizenship is conditional in a way it is not for everybody else. So your citizenship is a privilege, not a right. My citizenship is just a right, yours is a privilege. Now, there are serious allegations against Begum, allegations which deserve to be tested in a court of law. And I'm obviously not asking you to approve of Begum. I don't, obviously. I mean, look, a few years ago, she said she felt nothing when she saw the head of a man who'd been decapitated on the basis that he was an enemy of Islam. Don't know what her position is now, but obviously these sorts of utterances are rightly very, very disturbing. Now, ISIS themselves, we don't really need to go into detail about ISIS. We all know that they're a bunch of horrific mass murderers who are beneath any contempt. The question here is not about the gravity of the allegations against Begum, which need to be tested. It boils down to a simple question. If someone like myself had done what Begum is accused of, would I have been stripped of my citizenship? And the answer is clearly no. So Begum's case is telling us that if you are someone with migrant parents, disproportionately those from ethnic minority backgrounds, that your, your citizenship is theoretically conditional on whether you commit a serious crime or alleged to have committed a serious crime because we haven't tested the allegations in a court of law. Well, there are lots of people who are white, let's be honest, with no recent migrant heritage who commit terrible crimes, worse crimes than Begum. And, you know, we're not aware of her committing murder again, Maybe, well, we don't know. That has to be tested, doesn't it? Um, but they don't have their citizenship taken away from them. We all share, if you're British, citizenship with some despicable people. Some absolutely abominable human beings who have done things which are so horrific they are beyond the imaginations of anyone with a basic humanity. They remain British citizens. They have British passports. Now, let's take the case of Rhiannon Rudd, who was a 15-year-old girl, a white girl, charged with terror offences linked to right-wing extremists. Now, the charges against her were dropped on the basis she was a victim of online grooming. She ended up taking her own life at the age of 16. But the case was described as a wake-up call about grooming. Now, I think a lot of people can instantly recognise, without even knowing much detail, how this 15-year-old girl could be the victim of grooming. But why not in the case of Begum? And I think that's because there is a more instinctive understanding about a white girl being groomed by the far right than a girl from a minority background being groomed by ISIS. Think about your own underlying assumptions. I'm challenging you now. Why did you think immediately about that white 15 year old girl who ended up taking her own life and think to yourself, I can see how she could have been groomed at that age? Why not about Begum? What's different? Now, we also discovered that Begum was smuggled into Syria by a, a Canadian intelligence agent 
which is pretty extraordinary. As the lawyer for the Bagan families put it, this was someone who's supposed to be an ally protecting our people rather than trafficking British children into a war zone. Intelligence gathering looks to be prioritised over the lives of children. No kidding. So the question here is about grooming and being trafficked. We're also talking, well, we're talking about ISIS recruiting underage girls to be exploited, to have underage uh, marriages. I mean, look, you know, a forced marriage under international law um, is what we're talking about here. It was a forced marriage because she's underage. We all know, of course, or should know, that sex with an underage person is statutory rape. That's how it's considered under the law. So we're talking actually about statutory rape and forced marriage. 15 years old. What we need to know, we need to know in detail about how she was groomed, how she was radicalised, that all those responsible need to be apprehended. Now, if we brought Begum back into our country because she's British, she's one, she is one of us, she's a Brit, a proper investigation and trial could help us understand the circumstances of her grooming and trafficking so we can stop it happening again, which I think is quite important. I think we should all agree on that. Indeed, it could become a pivotal moment in helping us to confront and deal with this particular form of radicalisation, particularly that which targets children, which of course is what she was. Now, the Special Immigration Appeals Commission, which decided the revo uh, the revo the revocate the revoking the revoking let's think we're revoking of her citizenship was lawful, did so on the grounds that it's the decision of the Home Secretary, and therefore it's not their place illegally to challenge it. But they did know that there was credible suspicion Bacon was recruited, transferred, and then harboured. Um, for the purpose of sexual exploitation, noted it was the idea Miss Bagan could have conceived and organised all of this by itself is not plausible, and also that they were concerned by the government's apparent downplaying of the significance of radicalisation and grooming. Now, in other countries, Spain, they're now repatriating families of ISIS fighters from civilian refugee camps. The likes of David Davis, a Tory MP, has called this a shameful abdication of responsibility and must be remedied. Saida Varsi, a again a Tory baroness said that citizenship stripping powers have been used almost exclusively against Muslims and talked of a two-tier citizenship system completely at odds with British values of fairness and equality before the law, pointing about how these extreme powers were concerned to six million people in Britain with a claim to dual citizenship. Again, citizenship for some Britons, those with dual nationality, and as we can see here, overwhelmingly used against Muslims, now conditional. Privileges, not rights. That if some commit serious crimes, they will be treated very differently than others. Begum was radicalised in Britain. This is a problem about radicalisation on our soil. And we have to confront that. That is a problem, a homegrown problem. Just as far-right radicalisation is a homegrown problem. And you might not like it. You might not like the fact she's a Brit, because she is. You might not like that lots of other people who do terrible things are also British. I'm afraid to say they are British. Being British isn't something that grants you some sort of special character. Terrible, terrible people throughout our history who are British have done terrible things. And you do not, or should not, have a system where those of a certain background, they are suddenly judged not to be British if they commit a terrible crime. Because you are sending a broader message about the conditionality of citizenship. And that is racism. Sorry. Some of you are going to go, oh, you're going to use the R word. Yes, damn right I am. Because it is. It's not about letting Begum off the hook. To the contrary, it's about saying, try her here as a British citizen, for terrible things that she did. But also, let's understand how she was groomed and radicalised and trafficked and hold everybody who was responsible accountable for what they did. So yeah, not a popular thing to argue. Damn right it isn't. But it is the right thing to argue. And all the arguments against what I've said aren't based in reason, in my view. Sorry to be blunt about it. They are based in prejudice. So... Bring Begum home. Try her here. Find out exactly what happened and stop it from happening again. That is the reasonable position, I think, to have. And I don't think it's giving sucker to her crimes or what she did to say, hold her accountable as a British citizen. Said. Looking forward to see the comments on this one. Please like, subscribe and do support us on patreon.com forward slash See you in a bit.